yeah I have a couple of examples just when you said it like uh, Death Stranding from a couple of years back it, Monster Energy Drinks and you know he's in game and there's really really high, high textured models no 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 oh, I know uh, <laughs> Very jarring, yeah. very weird, very just, no, you're just shoehorning this in. And then yeah. more recently, uh, Spider-Man 2, Marvel Spider-Man 2, they must have a deal with Nike. And, you know, towards, spoilers for anyone, uh, towards the end, Miles gets a costume that he's that he's made himself, and it's it's all Nike. And then Nike are selling those uh, inspired so, trainers from the game, I, which isn't yeah. the worst and, I like but, I like that one because that's probably who Miles is. If you and I I haven't got that far in the game. Like yeah, I haven't played far enough to get it. And I know Bait. There's a store called Bait um, that shows up in in Spider Man, and, and that's that's a real world New York City. Yeah. Bait's a great brand. I like how that shows up. I love. I think Nike and I, I wasn't involved. And I, I I do a lot with with Jordan and the, and the brands. I I didn't work on the Spider Man one, but like I know that they got. They they made a shoe for the first one, but they got they had to take it off there because of licensing issues. So I was good to see it authentically in the film, and then you get to see it in the game. And so I think that connect like if you think about who Miles is, like he's definitely Jordan kid, right? Or he's, he's a young the- kid. Yeah, yeah. So, he's like, he, that, into his fashion. Feel, yeah, it feels good. The Mountain Dew like was a good good example, or the Monster Ingr- integration is a little bit tougher and that that's a harder one for sure. And I think that's the stuff that we try and authenticate. Like I would have done, like if they gave us New York city, we'd, we'd bring in like Prince street pizza and we'd bring in all these brands that kind of like, yeah. when I'm here, I really want to hit these spots. So yeah, it's, I think it's probably different for everybody, but I think it's that, I think those are two good comps of different sides of the spectrum of how do you kind of make it feel now you can't overdo it. And he's like, Hey, Nike. And then there's an ad and then there's yeah. all this yeah. stuff, but if you can, you know, authentically, I, I look at what FIFA did and uh, I think we did in 2013 where the Coke one was a really good example is when you, you know, they had an athlete that you had to play in the game and Coke actually signed him as an authentic kind of sponsor. And then as mm. you're playing through the game, you actually, as you level up in the game, you finally get to the premier league and you actually get to film a commercial and that's really big for your character and you have to film a Coke commercial. So like, it, it's an ad but integrated into the journey of the character, which yeah. made a ton of sense. Um, so I think if done properly, brands, there's a place that brands can really kind of make this story better. Um, yeah. And then there's things that just kind of like, you don't want to make somebody watch a commercial to go through a thing or even having Mercedes Benz in kind of uh, when you think about Mario Kart, like you don't want to put a Mercedes in a Mario Kart because like, it's not the real world, right? You don't want to break yep. that belief of that world. And so, I think you have to be very careful on kind of where to apply brands. Yeah. Is is there ways to maybe, I know the simplest thing is discounts, but rewards for players. So imagine, you know, talking about uh, Spider-Man again, if if you say, and they have, they must have that deal with Nike. So say it's, you know, anyone who owns the game can have a 10% discount, but anyone who gets the platinum trophy or finish, you know, finishes the game gets maybe a 15, 20% discount kind of, appealing to the competitive nature of a player you know we yeah we did it with call of duty i think the disc the discount is tough because you've probably got 100 million people playing it and so like the dude i'm I'm sure the nike said the risk of the discount is a little bit tougher i think it's It's great we did it with call of duty uh and adidas where we actually worked with a musician named Pusha t and he designed a shoe um, and the only way you had access to that shoe is you had to prestige your character up to a single us uh, up to a hundred in Call of Duty, and that would unlock the ability to buy the shoe. Gotcha. Um, and so I think kind of finding ways to reward things. We're always careful, you know. If if you play Fortnite at all, you know that the difference between the skins and all that stuff is just mm-hmm. kind of decorative, right? It doesn't affect yeah. gameplay. My kids will tell me like, "Hey, the the hitbox is wider on this character, so I'm playing as a girl, and I'm playing, you know, there's I'm gonna be uh, like green, so I can hide in bushes." So there's some competitive things to it, <laughs> but like yeah, the they're, they're hardcore, like, yeah, yeah, that, like for those kids in the competitive side, there's some things there, but like this, the the competitive, you can't have. You can't have a Nike in the game that makes you run faster, right? Yes. You've got to keep the balance and you don't want to make it look like, oh, if you buy this, you're going to be better. Like you don't want to, there's, you shouldn't, you shouldn't have these hurdles that people have to spend money to be better. Yeah. Um, you know, we're sent, yeah. yeah we're, and, and luckily the publishers are totally in line with that thinking. Sometimes the brands are a little bit tougher to be like, hey, you should be able to jump higher or, or run faster. Or if you drink this, this beverage, 
um, <laughs> your, your power goes up there. So like managing some of those thoughts that, you know, which are, which are good, uh, like the good thoughts by the brand, but like our job is to make sure that we're protecting the, the gamer or protecting the brand from the gamers. Right. How are we yeah. making sure that the balance is, is the right way? And we're kind of that connective tissue between the publisher, the brand and the consumer and making mm -hmm. sure that like kind of everybody's winning the brand you know, the game is getting some marketing that they love. The brand is getting that close association, but the, the consumer experience is like unlocking things for, for behavior. So I think there's a, a kind of a tight wire that you walk through um, just to make sure that everybody is, is kind of passionate. I mean, when we, when a brand hired as us, the first thing we say is we're going to like, our promise is that you're not going to show up on Reddit, right? Which feels like a weird brand promise, but like, we're going to do these things the right way. And we're going to make sure that you're not getting called out for it. And like you, the idea of these programs is to turn these consumers into evangelists for you. And so how do you get them? Hey, where did you get that scan? Oh, I got it doing this or with this brand, or we just did a program. We have a, a restaurant called IHOP in the U S which is a, a breakfast, awesome breakfast restaurant. We just did a magic, the gathering kind of, we made five different pancakes for magic, magic, the gathering from all the different characters. And we encourage people to kind of come in, you know, have fun with the, you can, you, you earn points in there and then you can turn in your, they have pan coins, which is a rewards thing for the restaurant. You can take, instead of getting free pancakes, you could actually use those to get IP, you know, XP in, uh, arena for magic and this oh. engagement and we gave away kind of card sleeves ihop card sleeves and and play mats and all these kind of programs and it was like people like it was so well received and it was like hey 20 years ago i used to go to ihop and they used to yell at me and i couldn't play games on the tables and now it's kind of now it's like this is what we do as a culture and ihop totally gets it and totally understands it and wants to support the communities and so like Yes, come in, bring your decks, play magic, play D and D, enjoy the tables. Like, how do you have those things? So, I think the way the world has kind of changed with with gaming and brands being able to kind of celebrate where they may not have twenty years ago, they're now kind of celebrating and kind of being very creative in the space. Sounds good. And you've mentioned so many different campaigns. I know, like even on the shelf behind you, Rockstar drinks. I know you've done stuff with Halo with them. You've done stuff with Cyberpunk with them. Is there any? campaign in particular that you're you're very proud of or was very creative or you know just really successful that you've done um yeah good question i think probably the best examples are probably not the ones behind me we have another i have another <laughs> shelf over there that talks about we do a lot of the lifestyle collaborations and, and kind of bring things to life i think the the best thing we've done in the last probably the last year is um as you think Think about the gaming space. I, I you know, we say 96, 98% of gamers are, are, you know, of the, the entire generation plays games, which means like the amount of female gamers is, is on the rise, right? Over the last yeah. five to 10 years, I think 46% of gamers are women now. Um, but you don't see a lot of female specific promotions for stuff, which feels weird, right? We make yeah. men small shirts and try and sell them to the, to the ladies. So the program that, that I love that we did was we did a collaboration with OPI, uh, which is a nail polish brand. They're kind of the Jordans of nail polish, if you've never heard of OPI. Um, but we did- the Xbox uh, controllers. Yeah. Yeah. Was, we, yeah. We did a program the first year. Um, it was a long conversation with OPI. I think I talked to him for two or three years, kind of like, hey, here's the gaming pitch. Uh, and we actually got to, uh, na naming is the big thing with OPI and, and the polishes. So any uh, any females watching this will know like, uh, Lincoln Park After Dark or Big Apple Red or like they have these kind of famous names. And gotcha. so they let us do a collaboration with Xbox with the spring collection where we got to rename all the nail polishes. And so when you buy you had me at Halo, you would get a character, <laughs> you would get a character in the game based on that color. Or if you, you know, racing for pinks or trading paint, you would get a Forza car based on those colors. How do we do something very specific for an underserved audience that never really got programs for them specifically? And listen, guys, a lot of guys now are wearing nail polish. So it's very inclusive program, but how do we do something very specific? And, and that was really well received. And we, we did a, a ton of things around that one. So I love that. We just helped Porsche celebrate the 75th anniversary of Porsche, where we made 75 different Xboxes with liveries from all the Porsche cars that were iconic, nice. uh, iconic moments in Le Mans history and, mm -hmm. and built up some things like that. Um, the Swarovski stuff is great. So just the things that are unexpected that you wouldn't like, no, like when we, when we did OPI, like no one's done a, like a, it was a massive program. I think we got 4 billion impressions the first 30 days and it dropped in 33 countries. Like no one saw 
an Xbox nail polish collaboration it, at a really premium level. Nail polish is named after your favorite games, uh, yeah. unlockable content in games. Like it was, it wasn't kind of a slap kind of logo slap kind of thing. It was like an authentic, well thought out program to your point. It went so well as like the, I, I spent three years convincing them to do it. And like week two of the program, they're like, what are we doing next? <laughs> um, and so the Xbox controller that you mentioned the next year, we actually took the summer colors and we debuted them on an Xbox controller. So like, yeah. that's how they announced their colors for that year. So again, that natural kind of connectivity of, of doing things the right way, um, but doing them at a really premium level and, and not kind of the logo slap stuff. Those are the, the kind of some of the collaborations that I love, obviously being on a hundred million bags of Doritos and 800 million cans of Mountain Dew is like, that's the authentic stuff. Now, how do we get content that gets people excited? And how do we do that? Like, I, I love the scale of those programs and the relationship because, you know, Doritos, I, I actually did the first ever Doritos video game promotion back in 2009, where I was running the Madden franchise. I let Doritos consumers pick the cover of Madden. Um, yeah. And back then it was, you know, I had to spend a lot of time convincing Doritos why that would make sense for them. And how do you take your chips off the bag and let's put Sean Alexander from the Seahawks on your bag of chips and try and vote for the cover. And so they, you know, we did it and it was the biggest promotion in Doritos. And now they're endemic to the space because they do so many programs over time. Yeah. Um, so like working with those kind of iconic brands are amazing, but the things that are kind of unique and different are, are really what gets us excited. Yeah. I, I, I see. Cause, and this is more a personal thing. I, I, I'm looking to get like clothing, like gaming clothing. Um, it's kind of what, even for Christmas, I was just saying, I'd love yeah. to pick up some gifts. I'd love, I, I know video games pay my bills now because I, I write about them. So it's like, I wear it with pride. I want to, you know, get a get a hoodie, get a zip top, get whatever. Um, yeah. I don't see as much. You see a lot of food, you see a lot of the energy drinks, you see a lot of that. I know, okay. I know okay. you've done a few. That's called Judy. Love it, love it. Yeah, so are there more, exactly that are there more promotions like that coming coming down the, the lines yeah i think we try and do them authentically we try and this uh, this is from uh anti uh anti-social did the we did the collab for the championship so this is kind of call of duty finals lee final stuff we we've been doing a lot of those we did a hunt there's a brand called the hundreds which is a like iconic street brand uh based in los angeles bobby is a uh awesome kind of driver of culture in, in the community. And so we did an Xbox collab with those guys. So yeah, I think you'll see a lot more of those kind of things. What I would like to do is have them not be as hard to get. Um, sometimes yeah. we, we did a, we did a, for the 20th anniversary of Xbox, we did a Adidas collab. Um, we did four nice. different shoes with Adidas. Um, and some of them were kind of friends and family only, but a couple of the shoes, we want to make sure everybody had access to them. So we did pretty, pretty big global drops of those. So, um, there's a, there's a, you know, Nike does a really good job of like super limited edition and then super mainstream. And I, I think we need more of those collabs in the space, but I also want to make them less chase and less hard to be a part of. And how do you yeah. kind of have those programs be a, a little bit more accessible to your point on some of that stuff? I've, you know, I've, I've seen Nintendo's done some, some fun collabs and we definitely have a big collab coming next year with a Japanese brand that everybody will love. So there's, there's more things coming, but it's, um, do, doing it in the right way and kind of making sure the, the accessibility is there and, and kind of those things is, I think is really important. We, we do a lot with billionaire boys club, um, with Pharrell and his team. And, and so we did that for the halo, uh, anniversary we did, um, on December 11th or on November 11th or sorry, November 7th, 11, seven, one, one, seven. Uh, we dropped 117 shirts exclusively um, on those kind of things. So there's fun nice. ways where you could have drops, but then there's yeah. also kind of making stuff, uh, a, a, you know, attainable is, is really important. Yeah, absolutely. And you've, you've kind of, you've hinted at a Japanese campaign coming up. Can you speak more about any future campaigns or, uh, yeah, we, I think we're at right now and it seems weird, but Q4 is kind of like, this is the moment where we're starting to lock down all the partnerships for next year. And so like, yeah. I, there's, there's a lot of things coming, um, you know, whether it be from the CPG worlds or kind of the lifestyle stuff. Um, some of them take a while to build out. So we're really in the middle of, kind of trying to kind of 
lock some deals in and start to kind of ideate on how do we bring things to life authentically. I, th I think the the Porsche thing that we had talked about this year, uh, you know, took a while, but being able to announce that with with Jeff Keeley on on um, Summer Game Fest and building those things out, those are the plans that are just starting to kind of come to fruition now. And so I wish I had a couple things I could share yet, but but not yet. We're uh, <laughs> we're it's okay. We're in the uh, we're you know we're in the lab trying to put things together as we speak. So uh, watch the space. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Not kind of uh, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. I have a couple more questions for you, but just uh, before we kind of wrap up, I just want to say to the viewers at home, if you like this content, uh, please hit subscribe. We we try to get out videos at least once a month um, and also hit the notifications and please leave a comment. If you like what you see, tell us. If you don't like or you want to see something else, something different, stick it in the comments below. Uh, we'll come back to you. Um, so a couple of things, yeah, and you mentioned Jeff there, which I, I really have to get to. Uh, your podcast, like you... It's a who's who of of celebs in the gaming world. It really is. Like uh, we've Aaron Greenberg from Xbox. Uh, you've got we mentioned already Mark Fernandez, uh, who worked with Rockstar. Uh, Jeff Keighley for me is probably the biggest name out there. I mean, we've no E3 anymore, so Jeff is the is the guy. He is mm -hmm. the guy. <laughs> he is he is front facing, doing those events, showing us all the games. Um, in your own words which I loved, you said he is the Ryan Seacrest of the gaming world because everyone who meets him just loves him. Um, speaking of your podcast, have you any plans to do any more episodes? Yeah, yeah uh, it's great timing. We're at, Yeah, we're bringing it back in next year, in the beginning of the year. Next year is our 10th anniversary, and so we actually have cool. a ton of plans uh, for next year. We're actually... Uh, caveat jeff and i are pretty close friends we're actually doing some things together next year so we're bu actually building some content together so caveat to that but i love jeff like take out the kind of we're doing stuff together part of it but like mm -hmm. he, he's been so important to like the authenticity of the space like i actually won a game uh, i won a game award from him in 2007 when they used to do the monkeys um and so i was actually i was actually on stage accepting one of those awards for madden back in, in the day but just like the, you know, the difference from the monkey that I collected on Spike TV to kind of where it is now, I think back then, I think 700,000 people were watching the Spike TV broadcast and for, wow. for Jeff to take that over to get to a hundred million people watching it mm -hmm. globally around the world. Um, and the premium nature of kind of the space and the debuts that he shows and, and all those things. It's, I think it's just awesome for our space. I'm, I'm a huge advocate of the gaming space in general, whether we do it or somebody else does it or what, like we are passionate, you know, Xbox is a client of mine, but I definitely have a Spider-Man machine I call that sits here so we can play the games that they launch. Yeah. Um, we, you know, I, I'm an advocate of this space in general, and I don't think we have there. No industry has a better voice for them. There's nobody yeah. in the movie industry or the music industry that has the voice that, that Jeff brings to this industry. So super proud of, of kind of what he does. And when I tell people that I work in the gaming space, I think people get excited about it because of the games and because of the publishers and, and all that stuff. So it's yeah. pretty exciting. I think we're going to bring the podcast back. I'm going to have Jeff back. We're going to talk about some things that we're doing. Um, but then we'll, we'll try and be, we, I try and do kind of an uh, organic, authentic lineup. Like I think we have everybody from like Joe Manganello, the actor who's the biggest D and D player in the world. And so being able to say that only, I didn't want to say his last name because I knew I'd that, get it wrong. Oh, <laughs> it took me a while to He's, he's actually a friend of ours. We do a ton of stuff with him. Yeah. But Joe's a great kind of example of like it to me, it's the, like at the, t in the world, everybody at the top is fighting, but everybody at the bottom, we all read comic books and play video games and do D and D. Yeah. Like, you know, when Joe, Joe was in the first Spider-Man, this first, yep. Toby movie, right? Like he's, he's that he's been around for that while, but he was the captain of the football team and also the dungeon master of his school. And like back then he had to like, make sure that those two groups of people Never were nice, right? <laughs> um, but nowadays, like all that stuff kind of comes together. And so I think he's a good representation yeah. of kind of how you can, you can kind of be a big part of the community um, and still be proud of being a gamer. When I first started at EA, you know, we'd have like, Hey, you know, Robin Williams doesn't want people to know that he plays D and D and plays these games, right? People kind of hid you know, their passions for the space. And now everybody is very proud and, and puts that out there. So I like to have those conversations, kind of conversations. I think we, we had Bobby hundreds on um, and Bobby's mm -hmm. amazing. 
Bobby, a real story. We did a hundreds collab. It was his first ever video game collab. Uh, the real reason that we did the collab, because he doesn't play, he doesn't play, but his brand, the hundreds is all about the life he leads. And so somebody introduced him to me because his kid's Fortnite account was locked. Um, and he couldn't get his, <laughs> he couldn't figure out the password. He couldn't get his account unlocked. Um, and somebody sent him to me and I said, Hey, if I unlock your kid's account, can we do a collab? And he said, <laughs> sure. And so I got his account unlocked in like five minutes and he's like, damn it. So, <laughs> you know, the, if you listen to the podcast, he'll, he'll tell you, uh, that I, you know, he's like, I could sell ice to whatever people that are in the, you know, in Alaska, but he just tells a funny story of like how gaming he doesn't play gaming, but all of his employees do and his kids do yeah. and his life is surrounded by it. And so that's why how we make an authentic collaboration is because his brand is about the world around him. And even though you don't get on the sticks, just like we do a ton of stuff with a band called Run the Jewels um, mm -hmm. that we're really close with, with Al and Mike who don't play games, but I think Al plays, Mike doesn't play, but like they love the space. They love the world. They want to be a part of this community yeah. just because they're so passionate about it. Um, and so it's fun to do things like that. So I think the conversations are always kind of interesting um, to, to find out where people's kind of passion points are in gaming. So maybe not, so hopefully you'll see the podcast and you'll see maybe somebody you didn't know, um, but kind of learn a little bit about the space. Yeah. So probably January officially is, is when we're bringing stuff back. Cool. And just for our viewers, where can we find your podcast? Uh, uh every, uh, everywhere podcasts are available. So I think we're on Apple and awesome. we're on Spotify and, and some of those. It's just the Triple Clicks Video Game Marketing Podcast. Yeah, and it's it's directly on your website as well, isn't it? It's linked there too. Yeah, I think um, I think it's right on our website. We'll stick links in the, below. Brilliant. It's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, wonderful to talk to you. I hope you know you pass some of these amazing podcasters my way. Uh, you know, just slip me their emails and I'll annoy them. And see, you if, should, uh, see if they collab for sure. <laughs> I gotta Absolutely. make sure you get all our products, so you could uh, you could kind of uh, I'll, I'll make sure you get I'll get your sizing and make sure you get. Some I'm a, I'm a good tester. I'm a good tester. I'll, I'll give you my feedback. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks very much. Thanks for having me. I appreciate uh... it.